Hello from Gardening at Duensa and this video comes to you from the Greek island of Crete where I've made it my business to track down a number of the monumental olive trees here. Now what's that all about? And it's quite simple really. In 2002 a committee was set up to identify and preserve and mark olive trees on the island of Crete that had that were particularly old or had particularly important significance to the heritage of the island. Now that list started off with a hundred trees in 2015 and it was narrowed down to 25 and then finally they have ended up with 14 monumental trees. Anyway, these trees are quite difficult to track down and some of them I didn't manage to find at all in the end. But do take a look at this video and see what fantastic, wonderful, majestic trees they are. Thousands of years old in some cases and well worthy of a visit if you ever find your way on this beautiful island. The olive tree has a very long history here in Crete. It's been used as a foodstuff from a about 3000 BC, first by the Minoans and then by the Greeks. And look at these vast olive fields. You can tell that it's still much used today. As you can see, this particular olive tree is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And back again. And that's our car, how we got here in the first place. I see that at some stage this tree has had ivy growing on it, but they've killed it off. Ivy, of course, is very detrimental to the growth of th trees. It it'll end up choking them in the end. And just a little way up from that big olive tree, it's a religious olive tree, right? So it'll come as no surprise that there's a church not very far away. And this is the church. A small affair, really. Nobody around. It is locked up, but I can see copious amounts of gold ornamentation on the inside. So obviously very trusting neighborhood. As you already saw, we're surrounded by citrus trees here. 
and one thing I noticed on my way up to a little church here is that they are grafting the citrus trees over here and you can see how this works this seems to have been a very old um, orange tree and I don't know why it's been cut down but they're grafting three branches of new citrus onto it. Now whether all three are expected to take or grafting the three is just to give the strongest one the best chance and then they'll remove the other two I simply don't know but that seems to be what they're doing here at the moment. Do you see how the trunk is painted white? Apparently that's to stop to stop it burning because of the effects of the sun. Okay so citrus grafting. I just thought I'd help myself to an orange here and there are so many I'm sure the farmer won't mind. It's a very hot day so a little refreshment would be very welcome. Now tough to peel but delicious and sweet on the inside. And because I'm just throwing peel on the ground I don't need to worry about littering. So monumental olive trees of Crete. Isn't it such a cool idea? At home we only have well, there's the idea of a champion tree, which means that for each particular type of tree within a country, you have the girth champion, which means the widest one, and the height champion, which means the tallest one of its kind within a country. But that isn't what these monumental trees are about at all. These are ones of particular historic and cultural significance. as I'm sure this orange is. <laughs> okay, here goes. Any for the camera, man? <laughs> there you go, Norn. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and today on the island of Crete, I've brought you along to see I suppose one of the wonders of the horticultural world, well that's what I'm calling it anyway, it's a 3,000 year old olive tree. Now this tree has been classified as monumental by the Greek authorities and there are lots and lots of olive trees here in, uh, in Crete but this one is considered monumental because of the shape of its trunk and we'll see in a moment just how gnarly and twisted it really is. Here we are just panning down this massive twisted trunk but wait till we get around the other side because you're in for a surprise around there. Look, peepholes, round we go, round we go, more peepholes. The cicadas are very noisy today, around we go. Really big tree, nearly at the other side now. And look at that, it's hollow. Come and have a look inside. You could have a, a small party in there. So this absolutely beautiful tree is 3,000 years old as I've said. It's an estimate because of course they haven't cut across the, the trunk to measure it by dendrochronology. Now 3,000 years means that it predates the Greeks. The Minoans were here at that time and the Minoans have left their language behind in written form which I believe no one has been able to decipher. What else was there 3,000 years ago? Well, not much that's been recorded for Ireland or for most of uh, Europe, but the, well, I suppose there were civilizations in China, but the Assyrians were at their heyday in what we call Iraq nowadays. And the Assyrians, they used to write 
cuneiform. It was a system of writing which used reeds, which they cut off, and they used to press these into damp clay, making little triangular shapes. I'm sure you've seen it in museums, but all these triangular shapes were amassed together in a pictographic way. So their language is pictographic in the same way as Chinese is and ancient Egyptian was. And speaking of ancient Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians were also around at that time. So this tree was around for all of that. The Assyrian language, of course, came before modern Arabic and Hebrew. So you can imagine how many generations of mankind this tree has seen. How many children have played under its branches. How many lovers have sought refuge in its shady boughs. How many wars have taken place in this spot. And how many people have suffered underneath it. And still, it goes on and on. How many heartbroken mothers has it known? who've lost their children, probably countless. And now it knows one more. I love the silver of the leaves on all the trees. I grew one in Ireland, you know, for several years outdoors and it did brilliantly. It had gotten to, I suppose, about six foot and then the bad winter of 2009 saw it off. It was very sad. <laughs>